What's going on YouTube? Um, so today's video, I'm kind of doing a little bit different, but what I've got is I continuously get asked, what do you use? What stuff works? What's essentials for polishing? Hey, I'm thinking about doing polishing. What should I use? What products do you recommend? So basically what I've done is I've laid out some of the products and stuff that I use when I polish. Um, like I said, I get Insta uh, messages on Instagram all the time or where people have seen, you know, my videos on here on YouTube on polishing or they've seen some posts on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, wherever. I get people that ask me all the time. So what I've done is I've gone ahead, like I said, laid everything out I use or stuff that you could use if you're thinking about, you know, just maintaining your wheels, you want to do, you know, some buddy's wheels, or if you're thinking about starting, you know, a polishing business, whatever you want to do, I've laid out stuff that I use and basically the essentials that you can use or need when you're polishing, depending on the job. So what I have is <clears throat> different grinders. I have different cutting wheels, safety equipment, sander, respirator, all kinds of stuff. So let's go ahead and get into some of the stuff that I use and that you can pick up if you're wanting to do this. So to go ahead and start out, I got two grinders. There's two different kinds. There's a 3,500 variable speed, and then there's a 6,000 speed. Now I've been polishing for about six or seven years now. I want to say the first two years were me figuring things out, maintaining my own wheels. I had my first set of forces when I was, I'm 26, when I was 19, uh, I was like one of, one of like maybe four or five people in my town to have forces. Forces were not that popular. Like most people thought that, you know, prices back then were crazy for, you know, polished wheels compared to what they are now. So I needed to learn how to do it. So I first learned with something similar to this, an attachment for a drill where I would buy, you know, just whatever hand polish and take a drill and put this on and I'd go around the entire wheel and it got the job done, but it didn't come out as clear or the clarity in the wheel was not as good as it is when you use a high speed grinder. Because if any of you guys know with metal or aluminum, the hotter you get it, the metal and uh, the polish or the rouge starts to work in and get into the pores and really starts to open them up. So the hotter and the faster you're spinning, the overall better look of the clarity of your wheel you're gonna get. So like I said, there's two right here. I'm always stuck with 3,500. You can uh, control the speeds when it comes to cut and coloring. But recently, probably in the last couple weeks, I switched to a 6,000 RPM for my cut and my first color. And man, the difference from a 6,000 to a 3,500, it used to take me, I wanna say, to cut color everything, I wanna say it would take me for, to do a, a, one set of four wheels, it would take me about probably two to two and a half hours. And just cutting and coloring with this has cut that. I, I can do a whole set in almost an hour and a half. When I do my orange cut and my first color with this, with a 6,000, oh my, my God, the, it, it's insane how fast. Now, the one thing I will say is that this, is about 30 pounds compared to this, which is like maybe 10. So the one thing I did have to get real, realize is, you know, you're gonna be sore a couple times after you use this, but it will cut your process down in half. The time is ridiculous and, you know, with everything, time is money. So definitely look at getting this. Um, the Makita, it works well. It's got a hand trigger where you lock it in and you don't even have to keep your finger on the trigger. Same with this variable speed. It's, uh, you know, it, it works. So whatever you wanna do, I started out learning on this and then I just recently moved to this. Like I said, I've been doing other people's wheels, making money for probably about four years out of the six or seven I've been doing it overall. And like I said, I'm learning and doing new stuff, but man, switching to this really made a big difference in my uh, polishing and the time it takes. So I can now do almost like two sets a day where I was only doing really one, but I'll have all this stuff linked down below. Um, this is a Harbor Freight one. I, uh, you can get it from Harbor Freight. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. This one cost me about 135, I believe, 140 maybe from Home Depot. You can get it online. I'll have this one linked down below, everything linked down below. I have a DeWalt one. I've had a DeWalt one 
which I will also link below, which is the same thing. As long as it's a variable speed, 3,500, can't go wrong, or 6,000. Um, next, I wanna go into safety. So invest in a, in a respirator, full face, half, whatever, something that you have. Uh, you don't wanna be breathing in these harsh chemicals. It's not good for your body. It's not good for your lungs, your eyes. Um, I, I can't tell you how much crap gets in my face or in my nose or in my mouth. And we don't wanna be breathing in those bad, you know, harm, harmful chemicals hurting our body. Um, so like I said, invest in a really good respirator. You know, I think you can pick these up for like almost close to a hundred bucks on Amazon. They're worth it. They come with different packs of um, uh, air filters to vent out, you know, all the uh, the dust and everything. Invest in that, like I said, safety. Uh, another safety thing you wanna get is you wanna get some gloves. You don't wanna, uh, you know, get all this compound and stuff in your fingers and your nails and your pores. Um, you know, it's just safety. And then, you know, every now and then occasionally the grinder will slip and the wheel will catch you. I've broken, you know, fingers. I've, you know, have burn marks on my hands, my arms. You really wanna get, you know, some gloves. You know, save your hands, save your uh, fingers. Then the next thing that I want to get into is um, we have a orbital sander. This is a DeWalt one, and I have a box of sandpaper right here with various assortments of grits. So the reason I say investing in an orbital uh, sander is because you know you get customers that have curb rash. Uh, scratches, if you damage a wheel, we can real quick. I like to work with at least 320 and then work up to 400 and then 600. I usually don't typically go past 600 unless I just polish something that's stripped or there's really, really fine, really deep scratches in it. But like I said, you can get these assortments on um, Amazon. Uh, like I said, five inch hook and loop uh, sander. You know, we really want to, you know, optimized sanding we don't want to be sitting there by hand or anything and it's uh it's a pretty good investment because i come into where people want curb rash repaired and don't think you can fix it you real quick slap some 320 on there or some 400 and easily sit there and smooth out that curb rash so i definitely recommend and getting an orbital and some sandpaper uh now what i want to go into is your buffs um it really doesn't matter people ask me all the time What's the brand to use? What's the best? What do you do? I use an assortment, whether it's Zephyrs, Renegade. Uh, there's a guy, Evans Detailing and Polishing here on YouTube that sometimes I buy stuff from him. He, in, he makes it in-house. Um, it really doesn't matter. It's all realistically the same stuff. It's all preference. Um, you know, they all really make the same stuff. You got your orange wheel for your more abrasive cutting, like if I'm sanding. Normally I like to start off with an orange buff with the 6000, run it full wide open with brown compound, especially after I sand it. But a lot of my wheels, I just jump right into with orange. Then I would go and take my yellow buff, throw it on the 6000, some green, and a real quick color, make that wheel start to shine and pop. And then at the end, what I would do is take my Domat flannel on my 3500, run it at about uh, 18 to 2000, no, probably about 1500 to 2000 RPMs with either some green or some uh, blue moon or white compound. I like the green because um, it doesn't show as much. Like if you know, if you people mess up their uh, their cut and coloring, they don't usually cut and make as many passes as they should. So the whites really you know, they turn the lights on and show, you know, your imperfections or stuff that you miss. So the green, you know, like a buddy of mine told me is really forgiving. So I like to match up my green also with my Domat flannel, but you know, there's also Renegade makes a purple compound. Zephyrs has a blue moon compound, you know, there's all kinds of whites. It really doesn't matter. It's preference, you know, I use all of them. So, you know, I will have, you know, several things with wheels, you know, that I use. I'll have a bunch of different ones down below that you guys can get into. But a number one thing I wanna say when it comes to when you get into buffing with these wheels, please get a rake. A rake is so essential. I, I can't tell you how much it is, invest in a rake. Sorry, my phone died uh, halfway through filming, but you definitely wanna get a rake. Uh, clean up your wheels so your compound doesn't get clumped up or nothing. Um, really invest in it. it. It saves, you know, time and uh 
it really cleans your wheels. And then also you want to get some safety flanges to put on your wheels, uh, whether it's plastic metal, it doesn't matter. And then also you want to get some uh, hand polish. It doesn't matter if it's Zephyr's Renegade, it doesn't matter. It's all preference applicator pad with a microfiber to clean it. Um, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, all this stuff is through various companies. I use a bunch of them, whatever your preference is, your budget, it doesn't matter. They're all similarly priced. So I just want to make a video showing you guys. So everything will be linked down below in the description. And as always, I'll see you guys in the